There is only one workflow you need in Blender to create hard surface game assets. If you find yourself bouncing around, watching random UV unwrapping tutorials, or read topology tutorials, or whatever else is out there, there is actually a much more streamlined approach to creating game assets that nobody has taught you yet, and I'll get to that in a second. But before we get started, if you're just getting into Blender or you need to learn the correct modeling approach, then you can enroll in our free Hard Surface Modeling Jumpstart program below. This is the go-to resource for hard surface modeling and we go through the entire process from modeling all the way to the final result. And over 70,000 students have successfully completed this program and you can as well. Again, I'll link it in the description. It's completely free. Now, as I was saying regarding game assets and the correct approach, there is a very simple acronym for you to remember. It will guarantee that you don't miss a single step of the 3D modeling process. And this acronym is called MAD-T. This is a system that we developed for creating optimized hard surface game assets without having to worry about topology or the usual technical issues that you would encounter. Let's go through it. M stands for modeling, A stands for automation, D stands for decimation, and T stands for triangulation. MAD-T is the easiest way to remember this. Basically, what the system does is it takes you through each step of the game asset process. The modeling step is very easy because you don't need to do anything here except create a good model. Don't worry about poly count or optimization or whatever else because that comes later. The automation step is basically the process for UV unwrapping. Now, if you go to YouTube right now and you watch UV unwrapping tutorials for hard surface models. Every single one is going to use the same usual boring approach. They'll teach you how to mark seams and how to unwrap, how to pack the islands, the usual stuff. However, we do not unwrap this way because it is boring and it's more tedious and it also takes longer. Instead, we automate this process by unwrapping in reverse. Essentially, what you want to do here is have Blender do the heavy lifting for you. And we do this by marking all the sharp edges with seams and then removing the unnecessary seams. This is different from the usual approach approach that you're probably taught because you don't have to go in and mark all the seams up front. Instead of marking them using the automation approach, we're able to unmark them instead. It's the complete opposite of what you've probably been taught and it's much easier and a lot quicker to do it this way. The way you do this in Blender is you select all the sharp edges on your hard surface model and then you remove the unnecessary ones. Now I can't exactly go into the specifics here because this video would be way too long, but Basically, you want to look out for four things after your seams are marked. Rings, chamfer seams, sneaky edge markings, and continuous sets of faces. Once you're able to identify those, all you do is unmark them and let Blender handle the rest. You could literally know nothing about UV unwrapping, and as long as you know how to identify those four things, your unwraps will be perfect. And that is the power of the automation stage. Now, the next stage we have is decimation. This is the part where you optimize poly counts. Now what most tutorials teach here is to create a low poly and then create a high poly. Now this is a dumb approach because if you end up changing the actual curvature of the high poly, then the baking is not gonna work well. Instead, what we do in this stage is we create a high poly first and then decimate that down into a low poly so that way you don't mess with the curvature and you only remove the elements that can be baked. If you have no clue what any of this means, then there's two options here. You can either enroll into our hard surface game asset 2.0 program so I can explain it further. And I also have a three hour long tutorial on YouTube. This is one of my most popular videos showing you the entire decimation process for game assets and I'll link that below as well. And for the last stage, we have triangulation. This will ensure that if your model has n-gons that there won't be any issues inside of your texturing software or game engine. Contrary to popular belief, you can easily use n-gons in your game assets as long as they won't be deformed in any way. But in order for this to work, you need to use a triangulate modifier inside of Blender. And the reason for this is that if you export a mesh straight up with n-gons, other software will 
will try to automatically triangulate the model, and sometimes it doesn't work properly. That is why you need to do it beforehand in Blender to avoid these issues. And this is why so many people say you need clean topology, because they don't know the loopholes and the hacks that make n-gons work. In case you didn't know, everything is triangulated at a foundational level anyway, so the whole n-gon argument is just stupid. At the end of the day, it's only triangles. And that is the mad T workflow for hard surface game assets. And I know many of you want to work in the games industry and do hard surface modeling. And if you do, this is the approach I would recommend taking. Remember the mad T acronym and you won't have any issues when you're designing game assets in Blender. Now, if you need further help learning this entire system and how it works, then you can always join our Hard Surface Game Asset 2.0 program. We have had students get jobs just by following the curriculum, so all you really need to do is sit down, practice, and study. It's that simple. Hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.